Okay, second half. These shelves are overburdened with books from the same series. You see the name Dick Mullen. Hey, Dick over. Mullen. I got called that. Oh, crime robberies, murders, even sexual crimes. We're fortunate to have Dick Mullen and his stories to sort all that out. You're a, a police officer, apparently. You should buy all of these. They really do teach a person how to be a proper detective. Ooh, sales. Sex crimes did pique your interest. But still, this Dick Mullen person only gets your pleasure centers down. Yeah, Dick Mullen's a dick. Crime fiction is a disgrace. An asinine misrepresentation of the physical attributes of the arduous everyday work of actual police officers. Yeah, yeah. These books greatly overstate the excitement of police work, glossing over how long it takes to actually follow up on leads and eliminate dead ends. Yeah, and how long police gets knocked out by liquor. Furthermore, they have no idea how hard it is to simply remove a body from a tree. Oh, they have no idea. What's more, they completely ignore the psychological hardships of year after year coming into contact with people during the worst days of their lives. Not a single mention of all the stress this work creates upon the officer's family. Detective fiction just doesn't tell the truth at all. Now, would you like a list of all the books found on the shelf? Your thing, I guess. You see, Dick Mullen on the job. Get me Mullen. The stalwart adventures of Richard P. Mullen. Dick Mullen and the murder in the orchard. The sordid affair of Dick Mullen. So Dick Mullen's real name is Richard. And he got the nickname Dick. And his middle initial is a P. <laughs> a killing is declared. Dick Mullen in the murder house. The final case of Dick Mullen. An obvious lie. Yeah. Dick Mullen in the clock tower. The ordeals of Dick Mullen. Dauntless Dick. Dick <laughs> Mullen's funeral pyre. The murder of Dick Mullen. Dauntless Dick. <laughs> Dick Mullen dies? Nah, are there any more? Wait, but Dick Mullen dies? Oh no. Turns out he fated to solve a case. Uh, I actually might do this. Are there any more? Yes. There's also the dame who did it. Farewell, my Mullen. Faking death seems to be a common trope in the Mullen series. The morbid tales of Dick Mullen. A dark tide turns. I really need to check out faking death. Tragedy calls for Dick Mullen. Another one with fake death. And, of course, Dick Mullen, the murderer. In order to catch a murderer, Dick Mullen must become the murderer. This is the part where Shiver should activate and maybe I'm the one hanging on the tree but I kind of faked it so that I can solve how I killed myself. After all this, you still haven't found the answer to the one question that matters. Who is Dick Mullen? Dick Mullen must be me. Your attempt to ask ah. but the answer fails. It seems very close by. Pulsating just out of reach. Definitely me. <laughs> the plaque on the shelf reads, Biographies of Famous People. You see a large variety of names, none of which ring a bell. Uh, store keep anything of note in this shelf? I would say... The Greatest Innocence. Yes, most certainly. It's an important educational tool delving into the depths of history, religion, and their relation to innocentic power. What? What's innocentic power? A very influential historical figure. But surely I don't have to tell you that. You're a law officer, and law officers have at least some education. Is that an insult? The book is also very daring. The author aims to re-examine the universal understandings of the innocentic system, creating a fresh vantage point and a shift in the tired order of things. Oh boy, uh, so... 
Which of these is the coolest and the greatest? Perhaps for a layman, deep analysis is necessary to peel back the multi-layered meanings. Do her words seem vague and abstract to you? So you recommend it? Certainly. It's prudent for a person to have at least an elementary understanding of history and society. Imagine the chaos we'd be in otherwise. You feel like you should get this one. Definitely. It's important somehow. There's something personal inside. Yeah, might be, but I don't have money. Browsing through all the books with all their names makes your head spin. None of these seem important or relevant. It's all just vapid egoism. Suddenly, a particularly odd title catches your eye. It reads, High Speed Love, the tragic true love story of Jacob Irv and Alfie Delatraz by one Cecilia Averbrook. What's it about? High Speed Love chronicles the romance between two of the finest tip-top tournay racers in history. One of them is the madcap driver, Jacob Irv. His blonde mane graces the cover. Next to Irv's life story, you see a slim biography of an Occidental rock star called The Anti-Star. He's famous for shooting morphine into one of his eyeballs and cocaine into the other. Holy... Get me this. Next to that, Rivasholian radio personality Guillaume Bevy stands in front of a rundown drug den. He's a permanent fixture on Channel 8, reporting on real-life crime and ruining cops' days. Oh, man. Boy, that. I really must insist you buy one of the books. Reading them is not for free. Do still browse, though, but not too long. I'll do what I want, Plaisans. I'm sorry, I did not mean to rush you. You are browsing. Go ahead. Take your time. Time is commerce. Well, see what other books they have. Several maps have been attached to a bulletin board hidden inside the alcove. They're held up by small pins. The board has come loose from one corner. The maps look old and faded. Your eye catches a map of Insulinda, a map of Revachol, and a map of Martinez. This large map displays archipelagos. You see a constellation of small dots on the light blue emptiness of the Insulindic Ocean. The largest in the northeast is La Cayu. You are here. Another far away in the southwest, Seminese Islands, Ile de Fantôme. Also, else? Laurentide, Fas Alamir. Archipelagos, North Arcade Islands, all just specks of dust on the vastness of the Insulindic. On the edges of the map, the color fades into a blur of dotted lines, black and white. In the northeast, a dust mite stands on the north coast of Caillou in a bookstore. It's you. Yes. Radiating outwards from you, the Suzerain River Shore, with a radius of 80 kilometers. Still, the crown jewel of this Isola would be barely visible. Can you see cities on the islands? You can, on Caillou, Rivershaw, a single black star, on Ozon, Fondelier, and Vimandu, on Archipelagos, Croyan Moran, Villiers, on Seminine, Oldivai, and on Laurentide, Deora of the Seven Seas. What's on the edges? The ocean breaks apart into a tangle of cosines and azimuths, all pointing into pale nothingness. Windy is the north azimuth. Grad is the northeast azimuth. Samara is the east azimuth. Seo is the west azimuth. Isolas, they're called. Connections to other worlds. Words past the Insulindian, unknown to you. You only know you've never been there. You have little idea what they are. Distant stars, gods, but looking at them makes you feel almost non-existent. Whatever they are, the Isolas are immeasurably large compared to you and very, very far away. And that's why I don't care. Perhaps they are gods, gods of distance and outer dust. Revishal, the please. north coast of a verdant island is shattered by the delta of a river. 
It is the River Esperance. Countless bridges put the shards back together, connecting city blocks to river islands. La Delta says a great artificial heart in the center, teeming with life forms and construction. To the east, rolling hillsides, Le Jardin, Stella Marie, the suburbs of Saint Baptiste, swallowed up into the megacity. They sound rich to you. This is Rivershall East. And rest of the river? Hudon. It's somewhere to live. Not bad. Then there's Jamrock. It's bad. People shouldn't live there, but they do. Then Forberg. It's almost as bad and much larger. Then Coal City. It's the worst. Wow, bad. Not bad. Everything relative to bad, huh? And Martinet? It's so small you can't even see it on the map. No, wait. There it is. North of Jamrock. The strip of coast next to the Greater Rivershall Industrial Harbour. It looks downright despondent. It's almost Coal City, to be honest. No, Coal City is worse. A charred limb. Rain falls on its slick black streets. And then there's the burnt out quarter in the heart of Jamrock. Is it cold in this bookstore? Or is it just you? Yeah. Must be something about it. It's not really a map. It's a tourist thing. A picture postcard with buildings on it, drawn from an isometric perspective. A date in the upper right corner says 48. Still, it's detailed. Could be pretty useful for scouting ahead. You see the jagged boxes of an industrial harbor, even the whirling in rags there. Hey, Starkeep, can I buy these maps? I'm sorry, officer. The map of Martinez is the only one available. The other two are not for sale anymore. And besides, you could scarcely afford them. <sighs> you know about my money situation. They're quite valuable, though they might not look it. The map of Martinez is 90 cents, though. Why is it so cheap? That old thing. It's an out-of-date map of a tourist location that never was nor came to be. From when some design studio people tried to spruce the place up four or five years ago, they also renovated the horse statue, set up those coin-operated viewers, and designed the new street lamp. What happened then? They didn't get that far, for some reason. A shame the project never got going. Would be nice if someone fixed Martinez up. All these ruins are bad for business. Gee. Might not be able to steal this one. But let's check. I don't have money. I need to. I need to. Slowly, you move your hand toward the map attached to the board. Before you even reach the map, you're interrupted. No. <clears throat> Perhaps not. It's against RCM policy to defraud small business ah, owners. Come on, Kim. Uh, fine. I want to buy the map. It's 90 cents. Always good to be informed of your surroundings. What's this? This bookstore is not strictly about crime, romance, and biographies of famous people. There's also a wide range of paranatural literature. Shit. Amidst the various books, you find one written by someone named Matthias W. Dundas. It's about wholeness, unity, balance. The point of the book, and many others on this shelf, is to give people medicinal advice in situations where they don't have access to paid health services. Oh, oh that's interesting. Various paranatural books still litter the shelf. Sorky, what books are these? Hum, sir, please, no browsing in that shelf. That wisdom is not for free. What? I can't have you end up like opening a police store next door and stealing my customers. Oh no. Ow. Look what we have here. You see a set of tattered curtains blocking the way to another room. A strange cage-like trinket dangles from the curtains. Excuse me, officer. The back room is strictly for employees only. 
Oh, shopkeeper, what's behind the curtains? Nothing. Now please go back to browsing the books. Don't you feel compelled to look at the books? The books are all you care about. Is she? She speaks almost as if she's trying to put a spell on you, urging you to buy more books. Oddly enough, the more she tries to draw you away from the curtains, the more alluring they become. What's this? You see some kind of charm, an irregular polyhedron assembled from bones, sticks, and straw. Inside, a disturbing fish head with empty eye sockets stares at you. Aside from poking at it suspiciously, there is nothing else to do with the fish head charm at this time. The curtains remain shut before you. Oh, well. I will open this. Just as you're about to pull apart the curtains, the petrified voice of the shop owner cries out once more. Sir, don't touch that. I told you it's off limits for the customers. Mm. Parapsychologically speaking, we're done if you decide to open them. I won't be held responsible for the consequences. Aha! Uh -huh. It's too dangerous. I knew it. This is about to curse. That's why you're afraid. No, it's just a storeroom for the employees, I told you. Now please step away from the curtains. Mm. But I sense this place calling for me. I must investigate beyond the threshold. You do? My god, even more reasons not to mess with the curtains. Just step away, dear sir. Yeah, oh, come on. Uh... Ma'am, this is different. I'm a police officer. I need to get in there. Why? It's not like anyone was killed there. Huh. I'm sorry. I don't mean to be so impolite. Just please don't go there. I can't allow that. You'll only make things worse and unleash the powers. <laughs> you think I care? I don't care. You can't stop me. Please just talk to me, officer. Come here and let's talk this through before you decide to do anything extreme. Lies. Rip them open, we say. We. Yes, we. There is something mysterious about the curtains. Be careful. Ah. The curtains, tattered with age and covered in dust, hang before you, as if taunting you. Oh, I'm so gonna rip them apart. Do it! You see a dimly lit room full of dusty furniture and trash. A doorway stands in the back, covered in dozens of scary little cage-like trinkets, your shadow looming over it like an omen. I warned you, you're unleashing forces beyond your understanding. Whatever, Plaisance. What'd you say, Kim? Yes? Let's see what's inside. Oh, man. Oh, 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 it's a door. What are, are these ceiling tags? Air dryers. Ooh, scary. Right. What, what does the machine look like anyway? Hey, what's this? Vaguely androgynous portrait of a man. <laughs> Merely looking at an unmanly haircut threatens your masculinity. Hilarious. A heavy door with a missing handle stands before you, covered in dozens, if not hundreds, of little oddly shaped trinkets and charms. It appears to be locked. Oh, we are in this. What if... You just break it down. Hmm. Yeah, break it, break it down. Gah! You smash into the wood and see a small crack appear on the door frame. 
It's going to take one more try to break through to the other side. But you've done it. <laughs> I am strong. You're not thinking of trying again, are you? Oh, whatever, Kim. Yeah. Fuck the system. We are in for it now. Bent metal. Broken glass. Your path lies strewn with the broken forms of everyday objects. You are the destroyer. The bane of inanimate matter. Indeed, no inanimate matter escapes me. Gaze upon me, stuff and despair. Kudos. Eh. I gained a thought. What's what's the thought? Temporary research bonus. Minus two pain threshold hurts. What does that mean? Your world is holding you back. Containers, mailbox, star stairs. They're all your enemies. Always have been. <laughs> Atoms themselves are in on the conspiracy, forming shapes and structures that you hate. Your energy stuck in a body. You are a spirit trapped in matter. Break free. Beat up that lamppost. Let it know just how much objects suck. Internalize. Great. Hey, punching bag. Sand is dripping from a punching bag. Thought I could punch the punching bag. Okay, so that this is what it is. It's it's a gym. The poster says Sidious Fortis. What does that mean? Uh hey, what's that? What's this? Shut the ball. Hey, not bad. Thirteen seventy seven. Could sell that for a nice price. Yes, Katsuragi. What is this place? Ugh. It's the netherworld beyond the veil. No, it's a gym. Nah. So on. it looks like no one's been here in ages. I doubt the electricity still works. Good thing we have a flashlight on us. Don't forget to take it out of your bag before we move on. Good catch, Kim. An eerie feeling rises in your chest. What if there's a reason why no one's been here for ages? Yes, because it's closed. Yeah. No need to look for supernatural explanations where a banal one will do. Now let's move on, shall we? Okay, fine. Um, equip flashlight. Where... Where is my flashlight? Nice. Uh, okay, before we proceed, let's do a save.